she's half a world away. Something in me wants to say. And I am so excited that you are here with us. I am actually most excited because this is the very first time we're actually doing a Power Up Hero interview today live. And so I'm super excited. You all know who is coming live. So I had to get a little bit extra. I, I don't know whether I'm extra enough of what's about to go down. But the person who is coming on is absolutely amazing. And she makes you glam up more than you normally would. So I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. You know how I love my t shirts and my jeans and most of the time I'm in pajama bottoms but you know how it goes when you are in the presence of glamitude then you do what you need to do like I said my name is Lisa Wisner and I am so excited to host the power up hero network for you it's all about celebrating people who have done amazing things in our community but most importantly we want to inspire you so that you know that this session today is all about everyday people doing extraordinary things because let's face it living your best life juggling a busy workload that can be close to impossible sometimes it feels like you have to pull superpowers from who knows where and climb some unimaginable mountains but I'm here to tell you that there's people who are making things happen and that's who we're going to be celebrating today so today, I kind of want you to take a deep breath, maybe grab something nice to drink, something that you're comfortable with, and I want you to just enter this zone with your open heart. I want you to take what you take from it. Some of you may be coming in and you're like celebrating the guests that we have, and some of you may be coming in to learn something, and maybe some of you are just curious about what's going on. That is totally okay. Just be here and be ready to be transformed in whatever shape or form that transforms you, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and introduce introduce our speaker. But before I do that, I want to let you know that sometimes in life, we believe that the power of women and girls is about effective, effecting change. And you know, this movement of empowering women is something that has been going on for a very long time. But for me, it's not enough just to celebrate girl power. It's all about making sure that you're providing examples of where strength is being seen, of where there's an example of somebody who's going above and beyond. And I can tell you all day long that as much as we are equipping our world with putting more girls in classrooms and making sure that there's more diversity in the workplace, it actually means nothing if you're not equipping the women and anyone else in general to actually be successful in those roles. So across the globe, we know that there's multiple movements that are helping to make women understand that they not only deserve to have a place, but they are prepared to be successful in that place. And I'm here to tell you that you know, empowering girls is something that shouldn't be taken lightly, but also showcasing leaders and making sure that people who are champions in their careers and driving change towards success, that is amazing. Somebody who can do that is truly amazing. And Zoraida Basaldu is somebody who is doing that right now. You know, our guest today is really and tru truly a power up hero. That is why she was nominated. And as we celebrate her, I'm just going to tell you that she has dedicated her life to preparing girls and women for success, not only in empowering girls, but also showcasing them as leaders and champions and women that are driving change. So Zoraida is an immigrant of Mexico, and I'm not going to be telling you anything new if you know who Zoraida is, but she comes from what I would consider, as she tells about a little bit about herself, from very little, from an opportunity where she saw that the situation she was in, the platform she was in, probably needed to be elevated. And so as an empowerment advocate, as a catalyst that she calls herself, she created an organization called Empower Femme, which is an energy movement. And it's been designed to catalyze you into your best life. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce you to our guest speaker today, Zoraida. Welcome, Zoraida. Woo! <laughs> Girl, we need some 
music going. We need some music. Look at you. Oh, are you in New York? What's going on? You, you, you know, know I have to make an entrance. I mean, <laughs> Woo, we got Beyonce in the background, y'all. Woo! Woo! I love it. 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 You have a team there, right? Oh my God. I know. I know. Okay. Before we even get started, Zoraida, I have to tell you first of all, welcome. But second, I know people need to know that we affectionately call you Zeyonce. And you pretty much just delivered what Zeyonce does. So before we even get started with you saying anything, first of all, I just want to let you know that we are so excited to be celebrating you as a power up hero. You have done so many amazing things in our community. You have touched so many lives, not only young women, not only, I guess you could say, nurtured women, right? <laughs> but you have also empowered men in our community to champion with you and be empowered, just like you're trying to empower us today. Welcome, welcome, Power Up Hero, Zoraida. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I could not sleep. I, the anxiety was just building, like three o'clock could not come fast enough. I am honored. I am um, so grateful to be able to be sitting alongside a mentor and a hero and a role model to myself, which is the lovely Lisa Wisner. But uh, yes, that's right. So you know that uh, my name is Soraida Basadu. I, uh, Soraida, but it's Seance if you're fancy. So, um, yes, you know, uh, thank you so much for having me here. I am so excited to be with, uh, the Facebook live community and yes, yes let's, I mean, let's get to it. I mean, the, yeah. the, the community is in for a treat, like, it is. On. It's on. And the community is. Right now, start hitting the share button and start calling people in here. For real. So we have quite a few people watching. And so I want to give a shout out to Sarida. So we have your, it's not a namesake, but we have somebody whose name sounds like yours. And she is a true champion. We're so excited she's here. Sarida, hola. How's it going? And then we also have Christina Miller is here, and she says that you are an amazing friend. And Zeyonce, what, 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 Zeyonce? So y'all feel free to use the chat as much as you can. But before we even get into finding out more about our Power Up Hero and how she's able to pull superpowers from who knows where to do everything she does, I'm going to ask you just a few questions in the chat. So feel free to chime in the chat and let us know where you're joining from. Some of y'all may be at home, but where are you in the world, right? So let us know. Maybe you're joining from somewhere that is not Corpus Christi, Texas, which is where we both live. So make sure you're in the chat and you're letting us know what's going on with you. And then if you have any questions or you have comments or if you have a shout out, whatever it is, we want you on the show as well. So we'll be sure to pull your comment into the show so that you can participate with us. So feel free to use the chat. Feel free to use the comments. And then also let us know where you're joining from. Um, so as we get started with, with the interview today, I just want to preview by letting you all know that Power Up Hero is about celebrating the hero concept in everyone. And that means that what are you doing that is above and beyond what a regular person has to do to persevere today? You know, every day we walk into life and we have challenges. But when we celebrate a Power Up Hero, we're identifying somebody who is doing the work they need to do but they're doing extra. They're going above and beyond. And how we like to say this is a hero has strength for two. And that is Zoraida Basaldu right now. So Zoraida, tell us a little bit about you and what you do for a living. Yes. Yeah, so like you said, um, I, I came from very humble backgrounds. But uh, at 11 years old, I had I had a dream. I had a very big dream. I realized that I wanted to be a an engineer, and I didn't know what an engineer did. I didn't know um, how how much school it took. I really didn't know much about what the career entailed or the different types of engineering. 
So, um, but it was the reason that I wanted to be an engineer was because I knew that it was a high paid degree. And that with a, with me going to college, going towards a higher paying degree was going to be what was going to help my family, what was going to be able to allow me to be a blessing to others and also to be able to create a foundation for a legacy for my my family and my right. kids. Zoraida, so, um, how did you know? How did you, hold on, how did you know that you needed to have a higher paying degree? Like who even told you that? Like. How did you know, like, <laughs> your degree matches your income? Like, Hannah, tell me, like, you're a kid. You're talking about, like, being a kid and knowing yes. this. Yes, yes. And um, so, so let me just say quickly, so I am a chemical engineer, and I work for a refinery. I serve as a process engineer. But uh, let me tell you how I knew that I needed a high-paying job. I knew because I saw how my mom struggled. I saw firsthand um the sacrifices that she made i saw uh you know i saw how we um and and there's nothing wrong with that you know we um we grew up very humble and that was the situation that we were in but i knew that for us uh, to take the next step was going to require um an education and with that education was going to come income so um so that's what my 11 year old brain was telling me like you need to reach not for the stars but for the moon you owe this to your mom you saw your mom you know uh cross the street to the bus to take the bus to go to a minimum paying wayne job so that you and your brother can have absolutely everything that y'all need Mm -hmm. And so I, so me seeing my mom making that sacrifice and then eventually having an apartment, then having her own little car and then eventually purchasing her own home. She kind of, she was that foundation that I needed of this is what hard work look, looks like. And this is what, how hard work pays off. So mm -hmm. how could I not, how could I not become something on myself? After yes. I saw the sacrifice, after I saw a woman bring her son and her daughter to to a whole new country, she didn't know the language, she didn't know anybody, only our relatives. You know how how could I? Not, I owed it to her to 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 be successful, to become mm -hmm. somebody because that was her whole goal of her bringing us into this country when I was. Um, when I, when I was around, uh, it was like third grade. So I guess I was about eight or nine. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was difficult. I started from zero. I had to learn English first. Wow. And let me tell you, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not easy. So um, so that's one of the things that I like to instill in, in the in the young girls is that, you know, don't take, don't take in none of this for granted. You have a hundred, a thousand and one opportunities. Grab mm -hmm. them, get them, you know it doesn't matter what your situation is um i joke that um that you know growing up we would go my mom uh, going out to eat was uh, was a treat for us so she would take us to um to to burger king and at burger king at that time the whoppers were a dollar and even though they were a dollar we we would still take our own cheese you know that like that that's how that's 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 just how it was, you know, for us. Yeah. And um, and so I am like, so, so she's my role model, my mentor. Yeah. She's um, who I had to look up to. So mm -hmm. um, I don't I love want that situation for her if I could be a part of the solution. And mm -hmm. I definitely wanted a a new destiny for for my kids and for for our next generation. You know, in my mind's eye, I am seeing yourself as an 11 year old here in the United States. But before that, I guess, did you move here when you were 10, maybe to the United States? I think that's what I've heard you say before, yes, right? So I, so I, so, yes, yes, like about eight or 10. Yes. So I started, okay. I went to, uh, I did fourth and fifth grade here. And then in sixth grade, in sixth grade um, is when I went to a program at Del Mar called Text Prep. And okay. that program, program still uh, runs every summer. So okay. during that program, they taught us all about STEM careers. 
and STEM is science, go. technology, engineering, and math. So I love that. Um, so so first of all, let me give a, let me give a shout out. Six, seven, and eighth grade students. <laughs> Yeah, let me give a shout out to Del Mar College because I was trying to paint this picture. I have a 14 year old and I have a 12 year old and I can tell you that the things that you're saying you had foresight for, you wouldn't be able to see that unless something was put in front of you for that. So it's so important for people to have an opportunity to be in the right space at the right time. So Del Mar College having this program to bring you into it so that you can see that you can have a career in STEM. You know, we take these programs lightly. And I think sometimes we see them as like, oh, that's just a summer camp for kids. And it could be life changing, right? It could be that one thing that happens in that one session during that summer camp that changes the trajectory of someone's life. Because right now, you, like you said, you're a process engineer, right? You're a chemical engineer. I think you graduated with a degree in engineering, correct? Correct, correct. I have a bachelor's of science in chemical engineering. But as a chemical engineer, you can do many different things. So in the refinery, I serve as a process engineer, which uh, is just a different role in the same engineering umbrella. But, yeah. uh, but oh my God, yes, 100%. You know, these, uh, these programs and these summer camps or these um, uh, STEM movements really do tap into uh, an 11 year old, a 12 year old or a 14 year old because I didn't have any engineers in my family. I didn't have those type of role models. I didn't have nobody in my family to say, hey, Mijita, look, engineers do this or look, a doctor does this or an attorney does this. I didn't have that privilege. We, you know, uh, most of my aunts, they're all housewives, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, in 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 my culture, it's mainly, you know, the breadwinner is the man. And so um, I didn't have those type of role models. So uh, going to this, this summer camp, uh, they would bring in speakers. Every week they would bring in speakers of different, that had, um, the different careers in the STEM in the STEM category. So mm -hmm. uh, one time, a speaker he he posted um, he posted all of the engineering careers, and he also posted their yearly salary. So I chose the one with the highest salary, and I didn't care what they did, how they did it. I just said, I yeah. am going to sacrifice four years of my life. And if I'm going to sacrifice four years of my life in school, I want to come out on top. I want the highest paying, which was petroleum engineering. So petroleum yeah. engineers are the highest paid. But um, then just move, move fast forwarding to uh, graduation and then college. Um, uh, I went to Texas A&M Kingsville. So th at that time, they didn't offer petroleum engineering as a bachelor's. So mm -hmm. uh, chemical engineering was the next best thing to me right so um, so that's i pursued i enrolled in the in the uh, chemical engineering program and then let me tell you something else um yeah. when i started wh wh when i started um kingsville mm -hmm. i started at age 25. i was a non-traditional student i mm -hmm. already had two kids um it was a big, big sacrifice, a big sacrifice to be a mom, a wife, a daughter, to be able to be on one income, to be able to go to school full time, to drive so one hour. You didn't graduate. So Zoraida, you didn't graduate high school and then go straight to college? That's correct. That's correct. So I, I didn't. When I graduated, I had dreams. I mean, I, I wanted to go to Texas Tech. I wanted to go to UT at Austin, but my our work situation did not allow that. Um, I, I entered the workforce and my income helped my our household. So, uh, so uh, you know, uh, going away to college was not really an option for me. And, um, so I entered the workforce and so entering the workforce was like, oh my God, I made it. I have a check. I have, a, I have, a, I have benefits in this job. You know, I was in a mindset of like, oh, okay, everything, everything's fine. You know, everything's fine. And I was 
I was in what I call an average mindset at that time. And so I was, you know, I worked for the state for five years and I would go into work, clock in, do my work, get come out, like really no, um, just, just like a robot, just doing the, doing the motions. I wasn't doing something that I liked. It wasn't my dream, but I had to settle. I settled. Yeah. I had to settle for that because, uh, because it was a good job because mm -hmm. uh, at that time I was already married and I had kids and, you know, so a lot of times we settle for, for less than what we deserve. And, mm -hmm. um, so with that average mentality, um, you know, I, I thought I was fine. I was fine. And then, um, one day I just looked around and I said, do I really want to be like these ladies that have been here 30 years? just making file after file, copying, copying. Uh, I don't, that's not me. And that's not the dream that I had. So, um, so I took a big risk cause I'm not a risk taker. Like I don't play the lottery. I don't, I don't do none of that. You know, I, I, I'm, um, I feel like I have no luck. And so I, I said, you know, I, I have to do this. I, it, it just has to get done. So, um, I stepped out of my comfort zone. I quit my job and I enrolled in school. And I said, you know, what, are, what, what things will just have to work themselves out. Yeah. And so eventually they did. Eventually they did. And now, uh, you know, it took me five years to graduate, but it has paid off like tenfold. Like one, this whole sacrifice has paid off 100%. And, um, you know, I couldn't be more proud of 25 year old Sarita taking that mm -hmm. step of, mm -hmm. you know what, we're, you know, we're, we're going to have food, light and water and we're going yeah. to sacrifice for mm -hmm. a better life. And let me tell yes. you, I have been blessed more than I deserve. You know, Zoraida, can I tell you, sometimes people don't realize you have to take a step back to move forward. And I think, you know, I, I don't know whether I feel like I'm in that space right now, but things have happened for me where I feel like, you know, it didn't go like I expected. And so sometimes you have to take a step back. So you're getting me kind of emotional here because I can only imagine how many people are watching right now who may be feeling stuck because they have an income, but that income is not feeding their heart. And they had dreams when they were younger. And now whatever situation, they may be feeling trapped in that situation. But you need to realize, just like Zoraida said, sometimes you just need to do your budget, like what I call a bare minimum budget. How do we still exist, right? <laughs> How do we still exist eating ramen noodles or whatever we need to do so that we can continue to move forward and catapult forward? But Zoraida, I want to just ask you this one question, right? I want to go very swiftly on this because people can go online and I challenge you, everybody on here, you need to just Google Zoraida. You don't even need to have any other words around it because she kind of seems like she's kind of owning that word, that name right now. But yes, if you're so inclined, search Zoraida Empowered Femme and you will learn about her. She's been written up. She has been on so many other shows. So you can see her story and everything. Today, I want you to learn about how she's able to be a superhero. How is she able to honor I call you being a goddess, girl. You know, you just exude this goddessness, okay? And you've created a beautiful life and you've created a beautiful organization that has made me get all dressed up, girl. I don't usually dress like this. People know me, like in my hat and everything, right? So you got me all dressed up and that's something, right? So I want you to share with us, right? So you probably are sometimes in your workspace as the only woman, right? And then sometimes, not only are you the only woman, I think I've heard you even say that you're the only woman with lipstick on, right? So you're like glammed out in your, I guess, engineering clothes. Tell us about that. How are you able to do that? Yes. So, so one of the things is that um, most people might think of an engineer that, or or any career, you know, that you have to fit a mold. And I don't fit that mold. Um, I don't. Um, I don't fit that mold at all. So uh, it's it's um, 
it's something that um that you know i work through every day because that uh there are obstacles there are obstacles as being uh you know a female engineer a female in the workspace a female trying to climb up a ladder um you know there there there, there definitely are obstacles and then being that there are so few of us um uh, makes it even harder um when i when i started in the industry about 10 years ago maybe about 10 12 years ago um there was only two engineers out of a staff of 500 where i was assigned to and so um i think that little by little we've seen more women engineers coming in uh to the workforce and also going through the programs and graduating but it's still going to be like a long long way before we can even even out the playing field but um so one thing that you have to do and, and not and not just an engineer but in any career where where you know you have to believe in yourself you have to exert that confidence exert that authority exert that power um and it's it, it's not easy i mean that is really why i created the nonprofit. that is why i created empowered fem because after years like i finally can walk in my power i can finally walk in my light i can finally see myself as a strong confident smart um uh woman that i have always been but i didn't see myself in that light so for me um uh, that realization honestly it just came like two years ago um when i turned uh i'm sorry a year ago like a year and a half ago when i turned 40. and so i left work on a friday 39 happy go lucky girl and then when i got back on monday i was like a 40 year old with a wrinkle right there my eyesight had plunged loud music was bothering me i didn't want to go pick up the papers at the printer i was like what the heck you know like i'm still the same writer that i left but um i just started to realize that you know what i am smart i i have a degree that you know a small percentage of people a small percentage of women get i am special i am beautiful uh you know i uh i do deserve this spot and 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 a little bit of anger from being to me old you know and finally realizing it's like where would i been had i realized all this when i was 11 years old 18 years old 20 how many risks would i have taken how many opportunities mm -hmm. would i have not passed up because of my own insecurities of my own fears you know and um and so now now it now you can't tell me nothing. Not I know. Not you have a sign. Can tell me nothing. Can you hold nothing. your sign, girl? You have a sign that says, don't tell me nada. <laughs> I don't even know if I said I it properly. Did, Let me show it big for everybody. Oh my gosh. You can't tell the writer Zion say nothing. Nada, y'all. Nada. And you know, this has to do with, you can't tell me nothing because I'm saying yes to myself, right? So the goal here is that at 40, something clicks and you realize what is going on? I am super amazing. So you know, today we're finding out how to be a superhero, just like you, Zoraida, are being a superhero. We want to learn how to get our own avatars. You have an avatar called Beyonce. I need to figure out how to do that. But I think Part of it has to do with i've written some notes about you so i i want to go through them because i want to learn from you okay you need to know that as much as some people may be saying that oh you know lisa's awesome whatever you know lisa and Zion and Zionze, right and it's like no you need to know that everybody has their own unique opportunities for awesomeness and success and goddess personalities and we all aspire for whatever every one of us is bringing to the table and one of the things that i aspire for that i see that you do is not only do you say yes but you're so daring it feels like as though 
like you have it feels like what you're telling us i can't believe it because of the things you've been able to do so far like your organization is i think a year like young and like the amount of things you've done you go to paris when you want to you go to new york whenever you want to i mean there's just all these amazing things that you do saying yes to yourself and i want you to share with us you know what are the characteristics that you have within yourself maybe what values do you have that dare you to say yes to yourself every single time so so like i said i've um it, it's not easy and it's and i struggle with this every day every day i fight my own head every day so the first thing is you know declare your victory i mean just declare victory don't second guess yourself don't think like is the loan going to go through am i going to get the job am i going to get an interview am i going to um am i going to get an a on the test don't even question it just declare victory see yourself you know getting whatever it is you you envision and you know before you leave the house just tell yourself you know my victory is here today i am going to uh i don't know do really good on that presentation i'm going to ace that test i'm going to um i'm going to sell a, a hundred shirts i'm going to whatever your craft is um uh, believe in yourself and not just for a minute but all the time believe in yourself you are unique you are special you are beautiful in your own way you have a voice you have a talent you have something that the world needs do not do not be scared to show it to showcase it put it everywhere let everyone know who you truly are um don't uh, don't be scared is, is anybody going to show up is anybody going to follow is everybody going to like it it doesn't matter you put yourself out there and then just watch how the community or things are just going to snowball your way um that's exactly what happened with me with the organization um i remember like you know two years ago maybe two and a half years ago having a talk with you like you know i want to do this and then you like just do it and i'm like but i don't have a website i don't have this i don't have that and it's like just launch with what you have and um and in this like one year and a half we've like we've grown so much we've touched so many lives and it's i mean as cliche as it may sound like uh even touching one person or having a little girl uh stop me at target or or a young man at the taqueria telling me like hey ma'am you talked to us about engineering and i'm looking into that career you know um putting yourself out there and 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 it's not easy cuz i struggle with it all the time but um you know uh just just be living outside of your insecurities and fears so um and then another thing that that helps me to to recognize my worth and recognize my value is to write down all the things that i've done and accomplished so every month i'll say like hey july girl you were good to me i did this i did that you know and it's because a lot of times we we uh, we get caught up in the just like Oh, I just went to work and I saved the company 2 million dollars, came home, cooked rice, just put the kids to sleep and it's like, "No, nah, girl, you got up at 4 a.m., you did a morning show, you 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 read your kids a book, you you didn't just you didn't just create an organization, you didn't just go to the grocery, you didn't you, you didn't you added so much value to something and so sometimes we forget how good and how amazing we are. So writing it down has really really helped me like it's kind of like oh I did that I sure did you know because um a lot of times we don't believe in ourselves and so then that kind of reiterates our value and how amazing we truly are but um for more tips and tricks you're going to have to read my blog at empowerfm yes. cuz I have yes. been, um I have been spilling all of these secrets out uh, because like you said uh you another thing that I didn't mention and I'll just mention it right now is that um I didn't want to depend on, on anybody else for my happiness. 
So, like you said, if I want to go to Europe and I want to spend a, uh, I spend four extra days in Capri, I can because my happiness is up to me. I can because I chose not to have a car payment so that I can pay on a trip. I made, I made. I made empowered choices. I didn't make average choices because I'm not average and none of y'all are average. So stop thinking average. Get out Girl. of this average mindset. Girl. Like, I can't even stop. Like, I need to tweet you like I, I somebody else needs to run this interview so I can be like tagging all the things you're saying. Girl, this interview is gonna turn into I have to watch this again and just Grab all your quotes and put them somewhere because you're dropping so much knowledge. But the one thing I want to tell y'all, we're going to take just a short break to continue the song that you heard in the beginning. And the short break is just for you to center yourself and think about what Zoraida has been through. I want you to see yourself maybe in her shoes. Maybe see yourself as feeling like the platform you are on, maybe the legacy that you have been brought into. You don't get to choose what family you're born into. Maybe that platform may not be the platform that you would have wanted, right? Everybody's throwing around this word privilege, right? You may not have been born with it, right? But the point here is, what are you going to do with what you have? 11-year-old Zoraida had privilege. And it may have been the fact that she didn't realize at a younger age, she ended up realizing that her adversities were a gift. The fact that she is where she is today is probably because she had her adversities when she was younger. And so it accelerated the way she saw her life. So when you see your challenges as, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening to me. I need you to know that it's happening for you. It's happening for you because you cannot be given more than you can handle. And you need to know we don't do things alone. Nobody does anything in this universe alone. So just like Zoraida said, she visited with me for like one minute, but she keeps claiming that like I helped her with Empowered Femme. And it's like, first of all, I had nothing to do with it. Okay, so this is all her. Okay, maybe she had one conversation with me. But the point is here, this woman already came to me like vibrating like the universe, like literally the universe was inside of her telling me. This is going to be something amazing. She's about to birth something amazing. So you need to know that the obstacle is the way. So as we go into this break, I need you to go to empoweredfem.org. www.empoweredfem.org. You will read the most amazing blog. And I will tell you that when you know Zoraida, then you know what it means to really tr truly live on your vein of who you're supposed to be. And we may be taking things lightly because we're here in Corpus Christi. I know Zoraida. I can go hang out with her whenever I want. But you need to know, like, the amount of knowledge that she has on there. I have paid thousands of dollars to hear that those messages that she has on there. So you need to know that this woman has lived an amazing life. And she has reached where she is at. And, and you will learn a lot from what she has. So as we move into the next segment of this session, I hope you enjoy the rest of our presentation as we take a little break. See you in a little bit. In Wallace, she speaks the truth. She reaches out, then teaches others how to. In Jaipur, she gives her name. She lives without shame in Manila, South Tahambu. Though we're different as can be, we're connected. She 
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this Power Up Hero interview. I am so privileged to be hosting Zoraida Basaldu right here with us at powerup.org. We're so excited because our mission is to empower you to be the best version of yourself. And the way we do that is by providing opportunities for you to optimize yourself. Not only do we provide you with opportunities for you to learn about how you can optimize your human capacity, but we give you an opportunity to serve our community. Part of serving our community is making sure that you are a champion for people who are doing amazing things. So for the fact that you're tuning in right now, you are doing your part. So I give you a high five. But the other thing I want to mention is that part of our mission is to eliminate technology poverty. We always like to say that our goal is to connect people and technology so our communities can become successful. And I'm sure you'll agree that even during this pandemic, it has put a bigger spotlight on how technology is really not a luxury anymore. Back in the day, it used to be like, wow, you got a cell phone. Wow, you got a laptop. Wow, you got an iPad. And now I want you to think about all the kids who may not be able to capitalize on their education because they don't have access to technology today. And I'm pretty excited because we, we've been able to do amazing things with different organizations. I'm working with an organization called Devices for Students. They're based out of California. And they have funding from like so many organizations that it's truly amazing. And to date, we have raised enough money to distribute 600 devices to students and counting. And we're, all we're doing is cleaning up those devices and sending them off to places where students need them so they can get the education they need. So our goal is your goal to create a community where we are as strong as our weakest link. We want to make sure that every human who lives within our community, whether it's our neighbor, whether it's somebody who lives in another city, it doesn't matter. You can't move forward if we don't move forward together. And that is essentially what this presentation is all about. It's about helping you understand how we can work together to make our communities stronger. As we move into this next segment, I want to let you know that today is all about congratulating a woman who has been nominated as a power up hero and she's a woman of inspiration. She leads and inspires and motivates all of us in our community. And if you don't know who this woman is, then you are getting ready to have your mind blown. If you haven't visited empoweredfem.org, empoweredfem.org, and if you are not a member, you need to join and become a member. Because when we nominated Zionce and her full legal name is Zoraida Basaldu. When we nominated her, it was really about honoring her accomplishments, honoring her legacy, and honoring and validating the work that she has done to be the woman she is today and to be the motivation she is today for us and to be the inspiration that she is. I mean, you could literally take Zoraida and put her into any situation, and it seems like she could handle. So even if it's rocket science, I know she says she's a process engineer. But I truly believe that if she was to become the next astronaut, that she would be able to do it. And that's what this is all about. It's about recognizing local people, neighbors, friends, family, people who are champions in our life, people who are heroes in our lives. And we need to support them and understand how their stories are actually important because their stories are going to be clues of how we need to live our lives so that we can also be heroes. So I'm going to bring Zoraida, better known as Zionce, back to the interview. And now we're going to get hot and heavy, girl. You know, you, you, I made it pretty easy for you because I was kind of like, Tell me about yourself. Tell me about how you got where you were at. And that's all kind of surface stuff, right? That's kind of stuff you say when you're like doing a regular interview. But we're getting deep now, okay? I need you to tell us details, okay? So one of the things I always think about when I think about a goddess and I think about how a goddess is able to do the things they do, I think about how are you able to manage having a full-time job, having a family, being a spouse. So first of all, let's even put a, a like freaking like, tag on that you know i think people don't realize that being a spouse being a wife is a lot right <laughs> you have to think right i mean i'm looking at my books back here and i actually have a book right and i bought this book for myself it's called lists to love by for busy wives so we do things like this right so i need you to share with me zoraida okay i need you to tell us how do you manage your energy how are you able to have a full-time job and then have this halo effect? And the halo effect is the effect that whatever organization you're working for, they benefit from the fact that you work there. And do you mind that I mentioned that you work for Sitgo? 
Is that okay to mention that? I just said their name, and here I am asking permission after I said it. Is it okay? <laughs> anyway, the point is, I'm not going to say local refinery. Yeah, it's a local refinery in Corpus Christi. We love Pitco. But the point is, I see this as an opportunity. It's a halo effect. You can see you there at, at Sitco being an empowered femme. And then at the same time, your growth in the community is actually being exponentially seen as, wow, if Sarida is able to be the person she is within Sitco, what is going on at Sitco? What type of opportunities are they providing for their employees to be empowered, to feel like they are alive, you know? It makes me want to come work for Sitco. So that energy, that, I guess, the energy that you need, the energy that you need to, to eat, sleep, and move, the energy that you need to keep your career moving, the energy that you need to continue to be the empowered fan that you are, how do you do that? How are you, and, and give us details. You know, from when you wake up in the morning, how are you able to maintain your work-life balance? Yes, yeah, so it's definitely difficult. Um, you know, as women, we wear many hats. Um, let me just uh, clarify for the audience and anybody that might be replaying this that uh, my employer does not sponsor my organization or is in no way um, uh, associated or affiliated with my organization so so we'll just leave my employer out of here <laughs> so but uh but um so yes being an empowered feminist um uh, is having to juggle many hats and having to juggle uh you know all the different titles that we have it definitely is and let me start off with the first title which is we need to see ourselves as a goddess a lot of times we've i've heard you know oh uh you know we're a queen uh you know fix your crown and it's like i don't have time to be helping everybody with their crowns i have my own crown to fix and um and uh a queen has a castle but a goddess has an empire so this is going back to that average mentality let's just stop thinking of ourselves um as uh, as as anything less than what we should really be um so um so a goddess wakes up early. A goddess wakes up early because that time to herself is valuable. So um, my day starts off at at about 4 a.m. or 4.30. So I am, um, I'm part of a, of a um, not so glamorous working hour community and they are in New York. So my day starts off in New York time. So. Uh, this community meets at five in the morning, but it's 4 a.m. for me. But let me tell you, um, being able to put the time in the morning from 4 to 6 a.m. to my organization, to my blogs, to to whatever it is that I want to do, if I want to journal, if I want to read, if I want to just troll the Internet, uh, you know, what, whatever you want to do, waking up early is key. That is the key for you to, you know, um, have, have that time to yourself and prepare yourself for for a victorious day. So, um, so my day starts off uh, by logging on with uh, with my not so glamorous community. And so, this community is a community of of women who are empowered, women who are who have drive, and and that that's the force that 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 I have. It's drive. You have to have drive. You have to want it. You have to put in the work. Uh, I would love to sleep till like, you know, at six and be at work at six thirty. But um, I have, I have, I have a vision. I have, and um, and that's going to require work. So I put in that work in the morning, and then um, being part of this community kind of fuels my 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 energy and it fuels my my drive because it's women who who already have products at Target. It's women who have quit their jobs and now their side hustle has turned into their full-time income. It's women who have uh, makeup lines at major department stores. It's women with ambition. Women, you know, if you, if you hang around with, um, it, it, it's like a vibe. It's like a, it'll just kind of roll off onto you, you know? Um, so, and then, so I do that from four to six, and then at six thirty, um, I head on over to work, and then I work from seven in the morning until five, and um, 
and my job is very demanding. It's physical, it's mentally challenging. Um, I do have to be in the field. I have to be in the office. And, um, you know, from that time, my, my work hat is on. And, um, and then at five, I am still, uh, I'm a mom. I'm a mom to, um, to three beautiful kids. And I am a, I am like the typical Hispanic mom that, you know, we're not going to go out to eat unless it's, a special day or Sunday or, or I work late, but so I come and cook and then, um, and then in the evening, um, try to walk because this quarantine weight is not going to get itself off by itself, ladies. So, um, you know, it's really, um, the, the thing that drives my day because I do get tired. I do, uh, I do sometimes sneak in a nap here or there, or sometimes I, I do wake up later than, than I should, but what drives me is, is my my thirst for more for uh to achieve my goals to um to look at my vision board or look at my my list of things that i wanted to achieve that day that week to be able to cross things off you know um i i typically um i remember i remember being being the old sarita with the average mentality the sarita with the average mentality I used to watch novelas starting at seven, eight, and nine. I would watch all three novelas on Saturdays. I would watch The Housewives. Um, I would, um, you know, just spend my time really unproductive and then wondering, why am I not getting ahead? Why, why do I see people with pretty things and why am I still stuck with this? Or why am I, it's like, it's because I was not putting in the work. Why, uh, you know, sometimes we wonder, you know, um, oh, well, they're lucky. Oh, well, well, her husband or has a good job or, oh, well, they did this or they, but it's, it's not. The power is inside all of us. You know, when I finally realized that all those things were not serving me, my, my, my whole reality, my whole life has completely changed. Like, 100% changed, you know, um, I don't really uh, spend time on watching TV. I really, uh, I just, uh, I focus a lot on my goals. And I think that an empowered femme should focus on her goals. Um, it's, it's not to say that that self care or watching TV is bad. It's just that, you know, um, your goals are going to require time, they're going to require a sacrifice. And if you really want to achieve what you want to do, you're you're gonna put in the work. Like you definitely like think about a time when you really wanted something and you just did it no matter how. So that's kind of how it is. Mama, I can't hear you. Sorry, I had my mute on and I was just telling you all that I'm taking notes. And the reason I'm taking notes is because she's saying so many amazing things and the clues are in the way the person lives their life. So first of all, the first thing I can say is Zoraida has joined a group. She's not doing this alone. So her group lives in New York and they wake up at 5 a.m. Pacific time, I'm guessing, right? And so she has to wake up central time, which is 4 a.m., which, by the way, that's my time. That's my wake-up time. That's my wake-up to power-up time. So I appreciate you being on my time zone. So that's the time I wake up. But I think people think we wake up to this by an alarm. I don't wake up to an alarm. I actually sometimes wake up at 3.45. 3.46 is actually like the, the time that I actually really wake up. But I actually get started at 4 a.m. Sometimes I wake up at 4.15. Sometimes I wake up at 6.30. I don't wake up to an alarm. It's whenever I wake up. So make sure you have a support system because Zoraida goes to New York from Corpus Christi every morning. Right, Zoraida? You don't do this alone. You don't do this alone. So find a support system. Find a way for you to be able to find a support system. The next thing I wrote down is that you spoke into napitude. I call it meditation is like napitude for me, right? I, I say like I mix when people are like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to meditate. But it's really like a napitude session. That's what I call it, right? So I say I'm meditating, but I'm really taking a nap, okay? So sleep is so important. So you need to sleep because actually, if you did not know this, like your brain operates by sleep. 
The only way that you can be a superpower in life is by sleeping, taking all that information and then sleeping because sleeping kind of bubbles up everything in your brain and makes it clear. So make sure you understand that sleep is important. Zoraida also talked about having a thirst for more. So she talked about having a vision board. So I suspect that somehow or another, there's going to be a vision board class that she's going to host for all of us. But the point here is you have to have a target. You have to have something that you have to have a why. You have to have a reason why you're doing what you're doing so that when it gets tough, you can go, okay, it's hard right now, but I know why. And then the next thing I wrote down is, girl, I'm going to unmute you so that like we can talk through like watching TV and stuff because have you ever seen that show, The Good Wife? Have you ever heard of it? It's on like Prime TV right now. Anyway. The point is, is this lady called Alicia Florek, and I treat Alicia Florek like it's cotton candy. Like I, I do all my work, and if I do all my work for the day, then I can have some Alicia Florek. So I think sometimes some people think that if you are a super energized person who's doing amazing things for their life, that you can't have fun, and you can't enjoy yourself, and you can't watch Netflix. If I tell you that I watch freaking Netflix every day, yeah, I do. But it's a reward for me. It's something that I plan to do. It's my reward. So when I tell you that I am rewarding myself to have some Alicia Florek in my life, that's what that means, right? So, like, you know that I need to make sure I've done all my work, like, which is feeding myself, having my self-care, making sure that I'm taking care of myself before I plug in and do things that are not proactive for my life. So do you agree with that, Zoraida? Oh, yes, yes, 100%. Yes, yes, doing, uh, you know, taking a break from the hustle and bustle because, you know, yep. pre-COVID, I was running around like a chicken with on my head, you know, from work, then, you know, to a, pre to, a, to a conference or a presentation or an event and then rushing to cook dinner and then rushing to get everyone's, you know, we're, we're always trying to meet everyone else's needs. So we need to yeah. um, definitely put in our schedule a uh, ton for our needs and, and yep. whatever whatever that is for you if it's working out if it's um you know reading a book if it's watching tv whatever it is definitely um you know making putting putting a time block for that as well yes okay so one of the things i wanted to ask you you talked a little bit about your morning routine and kind of like how your day operates but i want to tell you that we're calling you a power up hero what does a hero mean to you So to me, a hero is somebody who can lead by example, somebody who has overcome something and, um, you know, and didn't let that stop them. And, um, you know, we, and I, and again, you know, I don't fit a mold. So I don't fit a mold of a hero. I don't have badges. I didn't, you know, save a cat from a tree, but you better believe that I'm changing people's lives. Um, I'm changing women's lives. I'm changing women's mindsets. Uh, and um, and I get affirmations of this all the time, like all the time, all the time. Uh, random people stop me and say like, miss, you said this, or you did that, or or uh, I want, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how through the power of even like an Instagram story or just even a post or even, uh, a story that I share, how relatable it is to other people, because, you know, we're all kind of in this together. And, um, and a hero is somebody who, uh, who recognizes their strengths and, and also understands the value in, you know, bringing other people up with them. Because, um, you know, like I said, for me, I always said, you know, when I make it, I'm going to give back. Like, I always knew that I wanted to give back in some way, shape, or form. And this is my way of giving back, uh, you know, especially uh, through the women empowerment movement. Because, um, because, because I see it. I see it all the time. And it makes me so angry that just because we don't know our worth, we settle for relationships that, that are not good for us we settle for jobs that don't value us we settle for circumstances that that don't meet our needs you know we um and and just because we we don't know our true value so um 
you know, like I said, it's taken me years, but uh, but definitely a hero, somebody who understands and who wants to give back and help. I love it. I love it. So I will take that title. Yes, thank you so much. And it could be yes. a hero cape, or it could be a queen crown, or yes. a goddess energy. Yes. So, however you want to see it, we give it to you. We give it to you because you're truly a Yes, woman. yes, yes. You but one of the things with, uh, with the certificate, we'll close yes. down shoreline. We'll have the drones release the turtle doves. Girl, what about to put a billboard? A billboard. Friend. There'll be a billboard at SPRD. Oh, tomorrow. another one? Yeah, another one. Yes, totally. <laughs> okay, so Okay, so those of y'all who love superheroes and you love the concept of being a hero, um, I love Superman, and I always think about Superman and having kryptonite. And kryptonite is, and Zoraida, I apologize. I'm going to mute you because there's some background noise where you are, so I'm going to mute you. Okay, so kryptonite is the thing that takes Superman out of his excellence, right? So he becomes not superman he actually turns into being a human so zoraida i'm gonna ask you i'm not gonna call it a weakness but i need you to share with us maybe dig deep and tell us what is your kryptonite okay it might be tacos but <laughs> my kryptonite is 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 imposter syndrome like i I, I'm 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 drenched with imposter syndrome. It's something that I battle every day. It's something that I've learned to recognize the triggers. It's something that I've uh, I've I, I didn't even know it existed. Honestly, I didn't even know that there was such a thing. And um, you know, fighting all those gremlins in my head of limiting beliefs that is my kryptonite. And that is why Seance exists. Seance is my alter ego. Seance is, is the confident, um, uh, well-dressed, well-spoken, the poise, everybody likes her. She's, um, uh, she, she's the strong, uh, a strong presence, a strong woman. So, um, so uh, you know, that's my alter ego. That's kind of like who I kind of, when I think of myself, it's like, um, you know, um, to be able to smash all those limiting beliefs and all those fights inside my head, I need to be able to um, to remember how amazing I truly am and my worth and stuff. But um, but yes, no, no, it's not easy for me. Uh, you know, I could. I could walk, walk. I could walk into a situation and, uh, you know, know all my stuff, know everything, and then all of a sudden, I, I see it, something triggers my 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 imposter syndrome, and I'll start stuttering. I'll start, uh, even if it's like an easy question, like uh, wh where were you born or something. I'm like, D -d 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 -d, you know, just and and it's like, oh my god, like I need to just like relax you you Girl. got this you know and it, it it's a it's a daily battle for me a daily battle you picked like and i'm pretty sure that everyone probably watching feels the same way but we do have so many ideas you said so right i said that imposter syndrome yes we all feel it but i also want to point out that angie walker who is my really good friend she pointed out how are you overcoming this how do you overcome imposter syndrome Okay, so like I, in my mind, in Sarita's mind, like um, I like Sarita's standing like this with her superwoman pose, you know, with the world at my feet, the world at my feet, and my cape flying in the air, and you know, me and and with the world at my feet, that is me being in control, me being in control of the situation, of my life, of my finances, of my happiness, me being in control of absolutely everything because um, I once depended on other people. I depended on food stamps. I depended on my income tax check. I depended on Medicaid. I depended on on, on the church giving me food. I depended on 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 my husband, I depended on, 
on friends. I depended on, on people who didn't give two cents about me, you know, and, um, and when I realized that, that I had to be in control. That's when that, that everything changed. And, and so for me, when, when situations arise or things, you know, I just, I just, you know, center myself and, you know, just take a deep breath and see myself, you know, on top of the world. I mean, I am a goddess, you know, I'm see myself on top of the world. I see my cape flying. I see my extensions flying and, you know, I, I just come, come into my own power and, and, and it's not easy. You know, there's, um, there's a whole lot of things I do. I breathe, I count yeah. to 10, like, girl, there's like so many things to do, but, but honestly, yeah. that's why I say leaving in the morning with a mindset of winning is like key. It is. It is. Okay. So I, and I don't know if you know this, Zoraida, but I have a concept for the word win. So we all talk about winning, but I see win as W-I-N. What's important now? For the day today, what is the one thing you need to do? Sometimes you walk into the day thinking that there's so many things to do. I'm going to do all these things. And it's like, no, 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 no. Just pick one thing to overcome. And that's how I overcome imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, for those of y'all who don't know, imposter syndrome is, and I'm looking up the definition, imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern, pattern in which an individual doubts their accomplishments and talents and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. And sometimes I get invited to do speaking engagements. And when I negotiated the deal, and I got on the flight to go to Dallas. Like, I was good. But when I woke up the next morning, I was like, what am I doing here? Why did they hire me to do this? I don't know anything, you know? That's what imposter syndrome is. It's like sitting literally in the room and feeling like, why am I here? And I don't deserve to be here. But there, there is some way to overcome that. And I think what Sarita was trying to get us, what Sarita was trying to get us through is that you just have to own it. And I think she took a step back. She did her power pose. Power posing is important. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll get ready in the morning and then I'll just power pose until I'm ready to go, right? Make sure you put some like super pink lipstick or something on, right? So that you feel super powerful. But the point is imposter syndrome is a real thing. And it can make you like, like second guess the action you need to take. So sometimes you may be empowered to do something you wake up the next morning and talk yourself out of it. Like literally tell yourself, what a stupid idea. Why do you think you could do that? No one's going to join your organization. No one's going to care. And that's what imposter syndrome is. Don't let it take over your life. So Zoraida, we've come to the end of the presentation. But one of the things that I like to do is a fast five finger favorite session. And you did not know I was going to do this but I have it ready in the wings, okay? Are you ready? So I'm gonna ask you, tell us, what is your favorite book? My favorite book? Um, I recently read that Jessica Simpson book and it just kind of took me back to the uh, Nick Lachey and Jessica Simpson, like, I don't know, it just kind of took me back to 1990s, uh, 2000, whenever that came out. But, um, yeah. uh, you know, that's another one you know, that, um, what, you know, we see her as somebody who is like dingy or not smart enough. And, um, and again, you know, it's like, she has a multi-billion dollar company. She has a brand. She's, she, nobody can tell her nothing, nothing. You know what I mean? But yet yeah, we see, uh, we, 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 we might play her small when we see her, but there's nothing small about her capabilities. So the Perfect. Jessica Simpson book is one that I, I read uh, a few months ago. Perfect. And the book is called Open Book by Jessica Simpson. The next question is, what's your favorite movie? Um, okay, it has to be Overboard. And it's an older movie uh, with Patrick Swayze and... Um, it's um he she, she, uh Goldie Hawn loses her memory and it's just like like the cutest thing and I 
I am very sentimental. Like I cried when the first American Idol won. So you better believe I was crying at this movie. Like I cry at that that commercial that shows all the dogs and stuff. Like I'm like, oh, I feel so, you know. But so Overboard is my favorite movie. Overboard, Overboard. Okay. And for purposes of songs, because I know we all have a favorite song, but what is your favorite song right now? So, um, so, uh, I'm not, um, ladies and gentlemen, she did not know. I was going to say that was Cardi B, but that's not appropriate. Uh, uh, the, I, I, I'm really digging the Beyonce song, the the I'm a Savage. Uh, savage! Oh my god, I knew savage. Savage. You know, yes, it, Ratchet savage. savage. Yes, yes, because just like I can put on a crown, I can take off a crown, lick my fingers, you know, dip the sauce. You know what I mean? It's not always all glamorous. No, you're a savage, girl. Okay, so that's a good that's thing. Right. Being a savage is a good thing. It means that you're taking charge, right? You're in charge and taking charge of the situation. Yes. Do you have a favorite quote? Oh, my God. Yes. And it's like the longest quote ever. And I don't. Tell me. What is it? I'll find it on my blog. What is it? Tell me and I'll read it I for you. It's, um, it, it was something about... um. I no, I don't, I don't know the lady's name, but it's something. It, it's like, uh, it's the one about. It was on two movies. It was on uh, a killer's B, and then it was in another movie. And it's, it's, it's basically, it's just like, um, you know, uh, saying kind of what we've kind of talked about uh, this whole, this whole hour about, um, you know, don't be afraid to let your light shine. That the world needs needs your your light and uh don't be afraid to walk in your own powers um and it's it's it just kind of encompasses everything that um empowered femme is about um i'm using my phone because my my laptop didn't work but let me see if i can find it that's okay that's okay there is a quote and actually this quote is from the bible it's from matthew it says let your light shine no. before the good that you may see the good works and glorify your father in heaven so that's one quote of it and then don't be afraid to let your light shine so there's many quotes like that about letting your light shine i love it so you find the rest of that quote, and then i'm gonna ask you another question before we close tell us who your hero is um so like I said, my mom, um, you know, the, the values and that she instilled in me and um, and how I saw her work day and night, um, you know, all the sacrifices that she made. She she never gave up. She was always on to the next step. Um, you know, definitely my mom. She's somebody who um, who I looked up to since, you know, of course. And um and that even though whatever our situation, you know, um, you know, we, we turned out fine. Everything, everything w was fine. So um, definitely her, she's my, my, my hero. And she continues to be my hero, um, you know, to this day. So. Mama, we can't hear, I can't hear you sorry here i am on mute to make sure that you are being heard and i totally <laughs> muted myself out of this conversation but the point is i love that you said that your mom was your inspiration because from your story i can tell that when you say your mom is your inspiration it was you seeing her life through your eyes right so you were seeing her life and you realized that you could have more and central to this idea is the fact that you need to know that you don't inherit anything in your life that you need to pass on. If you are brought up in an environment that you don't feel that you need to live into, don't pass that on to future generations. Do what our amazing Zionce has done. And she has literally changed the trajectory of her life, of her family, generationally. 
I can tell you right now, the lifestyle she is living is changing the generation of the Basal Du, I guess, dynasty, right? So when we think about how amazing you're going to be, this is truly what we're talking about. And we're talking about having the belief that you can transform legacies. You can transform lives. You can change communities. And you can actually become a person of power and that distributes your really smart decision-making process to help economically, socially, and also on a psychological level. You need to know that your power is not just about living your life to the best of your ability. You know, Abraham Maslow said, what one can be, one must be. And it's important to live through that lens, but it's also more important to understand that your legacy does not determine where you need to go. It means that you need to step out if you need to step out. It means that you need to move forward if you need to move forward. So Zoraida, I just want to close by saying I want to thank you so much. First of all, for being the amazing human you are. You know, your story is going to be written up, I think, in our history book, Corpus Christi. But more important than that, you know, you have touched well, darling, on- I mean, the only... Uh- that you have to wait for the Netflix three-part series. We are we just can't find an actress to embody all of this. Girl. I mean, Hollywood is still not there yet. And you're just gonna have to play yourself. Okay. You're just gonna have to play I yourself, know. girl. They're gonna have to cast you, okay? <laughs> but anyway, yes. the fun is you're a hero or a shero. You are a woman who is admired for your courage and resilience in our community. And we want to thank you so much for accepting this nomination of being a power up hero. And we are going to be a champion for you. And we're going to continue to champion your efforts in leading the charge and actualizing your potential. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to say a congratulations to Zoraida for winning this award. And also thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Thank you, Zoraida. Bye girl. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to close off by letting you know that if you want to know more about this Power Up Hero that we just talked about, you can go to our podcast page, which is poweruphero.org, poweruphero.org. And on this website, you'll be able to learn more about her heroic story. But more important than that, you learn about her positive attitude and the specific things that she has been able to do to have commitment to living her best life because this is not a dress rehearsal. You only get one shot of this thing called life. So you need to do it to your fullest potential. And so you need to plug in and you need to think about how you can be a hero in your own life. And I'm so excited that you've joined us here today so that you can power up your life. Once again, my name is Lisa Wisner and be sure to make sure that you have signed up to get notifications whenever we are going live or whenever we have posted a new podcast. So you can find us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on iHeartRadio, on The Beach 96.5, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere that you can hear any audio, we have plugged in ourselves. So anywhere and everywhere that you tune into your podcasts, that is where we are at. So I thank you so much for being here, and I hope you make this an amazing day. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,